A lot of new SOC analysts make the same mistakes when they first start out. The good news is most of them are completely avoidable. In today's video, I am going to break down the most common mistakes beginners make in a SOC and more importantly, how you can avoid them and start improving faster. If this is your first time seeing my video, hello, my name is Steven and I've been working in the cybersecurity industry for about nine years now, mainly within the security operations domain. On this channel, you'll find various videos about career guidance, lab walkthroughs, and SOC related projects that you can work on to build up your portfolio. If you're just getting started as a SOC analyst, it's normal to feel overwhelmed by alerts, logs, and escalation procedures. But if you know about these mistakes ahead of time, you can avoid a lot of the struggles that most beginners go through in their first year. Let's go through them one by one. Mistake number one is treating every alert as equal. The first mistake is treating every alert like it's critical. A lot of beginners panic when they see alerts and escalate everything without taking a closer look. But not every alert is a real security incident. In fact, many alerts are just noise from normal network activity. Here is what helped me early on in my career as a SOC analyst. Before escalating, take a step back and analyze the logs and context. Use frameworks like the MITRE ATT&CK framework to understand what a real attack might look like. Look for patterns across multiple alerts before deciding on what needs to be actioned. You kind of want to think of it like being a doctor. If a patient walks in with a cough, you don't automatically assume it's a heart attack. You triage and assess by checking for other symptoms first. Being a SOC analyst is the same. You need to dig a bit deeper before assuming the worst. The second mistake is poor documentation. Many new analysts, they write vague notes or skip documenting important parts of their investigation. They leave out what they checked, what they found, and why they made the decisions they did. Good documentation isn't just for the analyst. In fact, it's for the entire team and for the leadership who may review your case later. So how do you fix it? You want to follow a structured format. Who was involved, what happened, when, where, why, and how did it unfold, and the potential impact. Always use clear and professional language. And do try and include evidence like log extracts, IOCs, which is indicators of compromise, like IP addresses, domains, hashes, and screenshots. You want to think of yourself like a detective building a case file. If you don't record your findings properly, it's like solving a crime but forgetting to collect the evidence. And without solid notes, it's hard for anybody to trust or verify your work. Mistake number three, ignoring log analysis skills. The third mistake is relying only on SIM alerts without understanding the raw logs behind them. It's easy to click through the alerts, but if you don't understand the logs, you'll miss important details. So how do you fix it? Well, you want to learn how to interpret various different log sources and try to understand its context. These could be from Windows event logs, syslogs, firewalls, EDRs, and many more. Practice querying these logs in tools like Splunk, Elastic, or Microsoft Sentinel, as this will help you get comfortable digging into the raw data to help you confirm or dismiss alerts. Think of a SIM alert like a security camera. It shows you that something happened, but not always why it happened. If you only look at the alert without checking the logs, it's like trying to solve a crime by only watching security footage without ever interviewing witnesses or checking the scene. Mistake number four, not understanding attack chains. The fourth mistake is investigating alerts in isolation. Many new analysts often treat each alert as a separate event without considering how different activities might be connected. But real world attacks are rarely one event, right? They are a series of steps. So you have your initial access, privilege escalation, lateral movement, and data exfiltration, for an example. So how do you fix it? Well, you want to study frameworks like the MITRE ATT&CK framework and the Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain, to name a few. Learn how attackers move through the environments, and when you do investigate an alert, always ask yourself, what could come before this? And what could come next? Mistake number five, not asking questions or seeking mentorship. The fifth and final mistake is being afraid to ask questions. A lot of beginners think that they need to prove themselves by figuring everything out alone. But the fastest way to grow is actually by learning from others who have been where you are. So how do you fix it? You want to try and find a mentor if you can. And when you do ask questions, try and make them thoughtful. Like, why did this alert trigger? Or what logs could I check next? Or how can I determine if this is a real attack? 
feedback from more experienced analysts will quickly accelerate your progress more than anything else. To recap, you'll want to always do the following. Analyze alerts properly. You don't want to escalate everything, unless it's process. Document your investigations clearly and thoroughly. Build strong log analysis skills. Don't just rely on alerts. Your tools can definitely lie to you. You want to think like an attacker. Connect the dots across multiple events. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help. Mentorship can speed up your growth more than you realize. If you found this video helpful, do check out my other SOC analyst videos if you haven't done so already. There's a lot of SOC specific content here to help you sharpen your skills and move forward faster. That is it for the video and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.